Hey guys, I'm going to show you how I took this GoPro Hero 8 Black, tore it down, rebuilt it, and turned it into a naked GoPro. For this conversion, I chose the iFlight BE Seaboard and 3D printed case kit. Purchased this kit because I really like this case. The incorporation of the front LCD screen is a nice design, and the shape of the lens housing will allow me to use ND filter covers and protectors if I so choose to do so. All of it is just 30 grams of weight, so it's really, really lightweight too. This video will cover nearly everything that I did in the process, from the software side of things, to the actual teardown, and then the final completion. I hope you'll be able to learn from it. Fair warning, this is not an easy project. It took me four or five hours to complete this, and if you're not comfortable with handling small ribbon cables, small electronics, and spending hours chipping away at horrible adhesive, then do not attempt this. But otherwise, if you think you've got what it takes, I hope my video serves as a guide as well as encouragement to help you through the process. And yes, this will void your GoPro warranty. So without further ado, let's begin. You might be eager to start busting this thing open, but don't do that just yet. First thing you want to do is get this GoPro connected to your smartphone, your tablet, whatever devices you're going to be using to manage it because once this back screen is off, you can't easily do that anymore. So go to Preferences, Wireless Connections, turn that on. Go to the Wi-Fi band section before pairing anything and turn Wi-Fi to 2.4 gigahertz. This is because you don't want 5 gigahertz to interfere with your video from your drone. And just go to the GoPro app and follow the instructions. Make sure everything is paired. Go through the process as you would just using the thing normally. And once that's done and you're all the way into the app, all the way got, getting to the preview section, and you're all joined and compl everything's completely paired, then you're good to go. Very important because you can't do this later so easily. This is optional, but I strongly encourage you to go to the GoPro support hub and follow the instructions for how to install the GoPro Labs firmware. It's really easy. All you do is drag an update folder to the SD card, plug it in your GoPro Hero 8 and let it update and boom, it's on there. Now, why do you want this? This will give you control over the camera settings using a QR code generator provided by GoPro. So you can actually change your resolution, your bitrate, even ProTune settings right from this QR code generator app. So no matter what happens between the GoPro and any of your smart devices, there's always a way to change it using a QR code. The best app that I've found for controlling a naked GoPro and GoPros in general is called the BLE Remote for GoPro app. Now what this app does is create a low energy Bluetooth connection to the GoPro and does everything over Bluetooth. There's no Wi-Fi involved. So it's a fast connection. It gets you in. It gets you to the settings you need. And the, it also restores access to the ProTune settings, which is awesome since GoPro took that stuff away from us. The only unfortunate thing is that this BLE app costs 10 bucks, but you can always do the conversion, then buy into this app. As long as you make sure you're bound to that GoPro official app, you can also buy into this BLE app later after the fact, so just keep that in mind. Tearing down the Hero 8 Black begins with a metal tool in the lower right corner of the GoPro. You want to pry this front cover material up, and we're going to get up just enough of it so that we can reveal enough screws to take it off. Now, this adhesive is terrible, and there's a lot of it. What I would recommend is to use a heat gun to soften it, and then apply the heat to one area at a time and hit it with a pry tool. Um, you do want to be careful though what tool is used where because that lower left corner has a ribbon cable for the screen. So as you go up deeper into the GoPro, you don't want to mess with it. Use alternate between a metal and a plastic tool. Just be very careful. Hit it with heat and keep going until you finally reveal the six main screws around the base to, that you're going to use to get this thing off. You need to get that lens cover off and you can use a metal tool to gently pry until you break that seal in which then you can use your plastic tool to finish the job that way you can get that off nice and safely and you won't damage your lens in doing this. With the lens cover removed, you can now start to remove the front cover screws. Now there are four lens screws, and there's three screws across the top, three screws across the bottom. These are torque screws, so get out your small torque screwdriver and begin to gently remove them one by one. As far as what you do with these screws, if you're using the iFlight kit, don't worry about it. You can just get rid of them because we're not using these screws 
anything you need is all in the kit to put that case together. Next, we're gonna go into the battery bay area, and down in there is this small little Phillips head screw. So you're gonna get out your Phillips head screwdriver, one that's long enough to go down in there, unscrew it, take it out, it should be a snap. There's just four more screws to be able to start to pull the front assembly off of the LCD panel, and they're Torx screws as well. You just remove them, there are four of them, and it comes right out. With all the screws removed, you should be able to gently pull the front assembly forward away from the back LCD screen and start to disconnect all these little ribbon cables. Please be really careful when you do this because these cables are attached and they need to be gently removed with a plastic tool. The connectors are really, really fragile and you don't want to damage them with a metal tool. Now I want to call your attention to the upper left corner here of this video where I'm going to show you this is not a cable, that's just adhesive attached to the back of the lens. That in the upper right hand corner is a ribbon cable and it does need to be removed. So once you've got all the ribbon cables disconnected, just gently pull that adhesive away from the lens and you're good to go. We still have two more ribbon cables to remove, but to get to them, we have to remove this gray door that sits below the lens sensor. I would strongly recommend just getting a small, small flathead screwdriver to get those screws up because I couldn't find an exact fit Torx. And once you do that, just take your plastic tool and you can get that lens sensor cable up. Now there is one right below it off to the right, and I apologize for the terrible photo, but I hope you can see where that final little ribbon cable is. We're ready to free the logic board from the front cover. And the only thing holding us down are the four logic board screws here, here, and here. And we've also got this black strip of adhesive that's holding it down as well. Just take a Phillips screwdriver and get those little screws out and then get your X-Acto knife or a small blade and just cut that adhesive strip. And you should be able to use your plastic tool to gently push the board up and away from the front cover. If it doesn't come at first, just be gentle and you should be able to slide it out from the side and give yourself a pat on the back because that was a lot of work to get this board out of there. I want to bring this up while you have the logic board out. So that right there is the Wi-Fi antenna. What some people will do is they'll desolder this clip and solder on a 30 millimeter wire to act as a more full real antenna. This is to try to keep the Wi-Fi chip from burning out. Now I didn't do this because it's still a pretty low risk of it burning out to begin with and I'm mostly going to be managing via Bluetooth and QR codes. With the logic board removed, you can get access to the lens and sensor module. It's held down to the front assembly by two screws, one here and one here. And you should just be able to gently pop the lens and sensor out. It shouldn't take much force. Be very gentle with it. Watch for that ribbon cable. And there you go. That's the lens and sensor. Removing the front LCD display is the last component that you need to harvest from the GoPro. And this part will test your patience. This is a very difficult, tedious process. I strongly recommend hitting this area really hard, really, really hard with a heat gun. In fact, it was so hot that I needed to use this mat to help hold it because I would burn my fingers if I left it on there. So don't be too shy with hitting it with the heat gun. And just keep doing this. Hit it with the gun, peel back, repeat. Hit it with the gun, peel back, repeat. And as you can see, there's this like foil layer that's covering the LCD screen here. During this process, you might see the front LCD display get a little discolored, but don't worry, it comes back. Just back off of the heat a little bit, let it resolve itself. It's just the liquid inside heating up. And as you pick away the plastic, eventually you'll remove enough that you can finally get this LCD screen up using this little tab on the right side. Please use a plastic tool, do not use a metal one. A metal tool is the fastest way to ruin this screen, only plastic. And there's adhesive here, so you gotta work this out too, but it should just come up, especially since the glue under the screen should already be a little loose from all the heat. Now again, this is a really hard process. Don't be discouraged, go slowly and take your time. Attaching the iFlight Beck to the GoPro logic board can be a tricky process, but I have a tip here. So there are three connectors that you need to align, one on the top and two on the bottom. Don't try to align the bottom two connectors. Instead, line up the top connector. By doing that, that actually helps to line up the bottom two connectors and everything should just snap into place. I tried to do the bottom and it was significantly more difficult. 
Once you feel that snap, they should be good in place. Now we're going to seat the GoPro logic board and Beck into the 3D printed case, but first we need to reconnect the LCD ribbon cable. And then after that's reconnected, we've got to reconnect the camera sensor cable. I needed to clean off this thermal paste as well. I should have done this before, but you really want to be careful doing this so you don't get it on your hands and then get it on a connector. I'm going to seat the logic board in the back in the case. Before you do that, just give it a good press on the back. Make sure the connectors are still in there securely, and then it should just kind of sit in the case nicely. Take the short length screws from the kit, there are five of them, and please note that I'm only screwing in the logic board here. I'm not actually doing anything with the lens. The lens will be screwed down later to the 3D printed case. Next you need to apply some electrical tape to the back of the front LCD because it is metal and you don't want it to touch and short anything out. Okay, now would be a great time to plug it into a power source and give it a test. Do you see an image from the lens? Do the buttons work? In my case, the record button didn't work, and I had to tighten that screw in the upper left-hand corner to get that connector to snap into place again. I guess it must have gotten loose during the process of seeing it into the case. Okay, so we're in the home stretch. We're going to put the front of the 3D printed case on the unit here, and we've got five of the long length screws that we can go around the case with. And that includes the lens, and you're gonna secure that lens right there with your screwdriver. And this is a, these are just Phillips head screws. And then take the 3D printed cover for the back of the lens sensor and connect your camera to a power source. I set mine to 12 volts and boom, it should work. If you've gotten to this point and the camera's working and everything's all good, congratulations, you now have a naked GoPro Hero 8 Black. Let's talk about the mounting for the iFlight case. So the holes for this mount are actually three millimeters and you're gonna need a 20 millimeter screw. Now I went on Thingiverse and I found this mount that somebody made for the Flywheel Explorer, which is the drone I'm gonna use this camera with. And this mount is perfect. I've got a link to it down in the video description below. I wanna thank one of my friends who got this 3D printed real quick for me. He used PETG and it's a really solid print. So thanks, man. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this how to build a naked GoPro tutorial. This was my first naked GoPro and I am really happy that I got it done without any problems on the first try. And I hope that you can have the same experience as well. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions or need help. Please reach out to me. I would love to hear your feedback. And as always, I hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to go do some flying. You guys take care.